Let's do it. <laughs> this is how you watch Hey, this is how you watch Hey, keeping the faith in the king, and the patience will give us a free. We're continuing with Ask According to His Will. And really, it's about getting your mind right, preparing yourself so that your prayers are more effective, all right? So that things can be answered for you. So we had left off with the money piece last time. Um, and I can't stress enough the one part. I was thinking about it this morning. We, we went over the scriptures that says you got to build houses, all right, and leave it for, and have children for your children's children and leave something for you. We cannot have the mindset. I mean, you know, I, I used it. I went into the angle of having money for the body as one part of it. But you have to leave, no matter how small or big. I'm not saying you got to leave them an empire, all right? You have to leave something for your children because we don't know. This, the, the scripture tells you this captivity is long. Nobody knows the hour or the time. You don't think there's been times in the world like today, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, where they maybe thought this was it? It's not for our role. But Captain Aparo is actually bring out is fear God and keep his commandments. And his commandments say build ye houses, build an inheritance, and leave something for your children. Yeah, it says that in Second Thessalonians, remember, he had explained to them right. that listen, this is what is gonna happen. Right. All right. So yes, that is true what you were saying. They were right. thinking the same way back then. Right. Right. So now we're gonna go in real quick to getting your mind right around the chief things in life. Okay? Give me Salah twenty nine and nineteen. Book of Sirach, chapter 29, and verse 19. A wicked man transgressing the commandments of the Lord shall fall into shorship. All right, so it says a wicked man who transgresses the commandments of the Lord shall fall into shortership. What is that word? Who knows what that word is? Those who know? Good, so we're going to define it. Uh, it's dealing with debt. All right, we don't have to pull it up on there. That's fine. Amen. It means debt. All right, it's another word for saying debt. So it says a wicked man is going to fall into debt. So if you got insurmountable credit card debt, you owe car loans, collections is calling you, it might be judgment for when you were wicked. It might be judgment because you're wicked. Remember, the most high judges you on different days. Everybody thinks death. Ha ha, I'm alive. I committed fornication, I'm still alive. I stole and I'm still alive. Hey, he might come at you in different ways. He might come after you through your loved ones. All right? Like when he killed uh, King David's baby. Okay? So you got to think about that. Consider why. Maybe that's your judgment for something that you did before. I'm not saying it might not be now. Maybe you're good. Maybe you're working on your repentance hard. But you got to consider those things. So that's one form of judgment. It's like, damn, you know, I came into money. I keep paying these things. And then it don't go nowhere. It don't budge. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Maybe he's clouding your mind so that you can't budget that thing right and, and get out of it, you know? So it says, A wicked man transgressing the commandments of the Lord shall fall into shortership. Go ahead. And he that undertaketh and followeth other men's business for gain shall fall into suits. Because you have brothers and sisters that want to latch on to like another brother's business model or whatever it is. He'll follow him around. Oh, I know this brother got good ideas for business. I'm going to move to this state so I could jump onto that. And then you fall into trouble yourself all right you fall into suits meaning you know so you'll fall into lawsuits whatever it might be or you, you maybe you don't pay things there was a brother recently that did that he moved from one state to another quit his job everything like that to follow after another man right uh, under the under the promise of you know yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and do some business and whatever and it's like two months later the brother's asking for money like four grand to pay his bills his rent and everything else and i'm like Where's your job? Oh, blah, 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 you know, I moved and this and that. So you moved without a job? What the hell is wrong with you? Well, I was supposed to come and do business or whatever. Listen, man, I think we were talking about this before, um, and I might have said it last week. Everybody has an appetite for business. Everybody wants to be a business owner. Yeah, business. But not all of y'all can digest what it really means to run a business. Meaning what? The fluctuations in income, the fluctuations in in uh, um, customers, whatever it might be. The different aspects that you got to deal with. Everybody got a good idea. Don't mean you cut out for that. Some of you need to be employees and that's it. Just just run with it. Accept it. Agree? 
help thy neighbor according to thy power, and beware that thou thyself fall not into the same. All right. So again, I've gone over this. When you're thinking about, you know, we got we got to get that Caesar Bourget, that Christianity mindset out of our head. All right. We need to understand what it's really like to be Christ-like. All right. Remember this. This whole ask according to His will series is about getting your mind to the Christ-like mind. All right. To that Godhead mentality as a people. All right. So you're there, and you're saying, all right. I want to help this brother out, so he needs to pay his rent, so you give him your rent money. And then you don't have it now, because you thought you were being righteous and you were helping the brother out, you know, or the sister out. We can't be foolish like that, you know. You give him the last five dollars for him to get home, and then now you need a ride. You know, it's like, you got to think about that. I've known brothers like that. You can't be simple, all right. When we're trying to help each other out, help according to your power, but beware that you don't fall into the same. Go ahead. The, the chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and a house to cover shame. If you have all those things, be content. Sisters, if you have all those things, be content. Don't be mad because you don't got the nice car or the nicer house or whatever it might be. Give your man a break. Unless he's just really being a bum, then that's a different story. Then we deal with that on another level. But, you know, if, if you can't be upset with those things. Be thou content with what thou have. Examine to make sure that you're doing all that's possible to, you know, doesn't mean it's like uh, Christianity also puts that out that it's pious to be poor and stuff like that. That's not true. There was plenty of wealthy Israelites. And they were able to help out. We went over that in Acts. They had extra, so they sold. Wouldn't you want to be in a position like that? See, that's why the most high ain't going to give any of us the lotto. Like, we're never going to hit the lotto. Because I don't care how, how much you think you're about this truth now. You hit the lotto, you out. <laughs> You're like, ah, oh, it's the kingdom. <laughs> All right. If you have those chief things, then so what if you don't have everything else? You know, you you rock with it. You do the best you can. Be content. Read. Better is the life of a poor man in a mean cottage than delicate fare in another man's house. All right. It says better is the life of a poor man in a mean cottage. All right. So some of you might have the mean cottage, or you might think it's a mean cottage. But if you have the chief things, then, then you're good. And not saying that the Most High won't bless you with more, but be content with that. And when you throw up those prayers for more, don't do it out of discontentment with what you have. Remember, don't lose the thought. I know, I know, I know it's like, I, I said the title of the class almost seems misleading, but it's really about getting the mindset, get your spirit right, so that your prayers are not hindered. All right? Understand that. Go ahead. Be it little or much, hold thee contented, that thou hear not the reproach of thy house. So whether you have a lot or a little, be content. Be content with what you have. It's, I'm not saying you shouldn't desire more. There's a difference. If you want more, if you have a plan, you're going to school for something, whatever, you want to get the promotion at work, don't, don't think I'm saying don't do that. But all the while, be content with what you have and where you're at. Don't, don't get dismayed over that stuff. Because that's just worldly stuff. It doesn't change the mission. It doesn't change the truth of the Bible. It's just what you got to deal with. Alright? A heavy yoke is, is upon all the sons of Adam from the beginning. It's, it's what we deal with in different, in different ways. Don't assume because the brother next to you seems like he's doing better that he don't have his own things that he's dealing with. Maybe he's content. Maybe he was content with the situation that he had. And the most I said, okay, I'm going to show you some favor because everything you asked for, you asked according to my will. You did it in that way. So now those blessings come. It's not always sin. I know I say that because you got to look. Sin could be tricky. You might not realize you're in sin. It's not always sin because you're in a situation. Maybe it's something. Remember, you got to be tried in the fire. Maybe something needs to be purged out of you. Maybe you're not putting the mission first. Maybe there's more you could do for the body and, 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 you, and you're not doing it. Because you're so caught up in it. You got one job, you have the chief things, but you, you want to work two jobs because you want to get the nicer things. And then what happens to the truth? Go ahead. For it is a miserable life to go from house to house. For where thou art a stranger, thou darest not open thy mouth. Right, so let's say you're in a situation where you're living with somebody, right? Or I know some of y'all do the roommate thing, and that's fine. But, you know, that makes it complicated too sometimes when you're dealing with that stuff. Because who has the preeminence? And if somebody's going to try to have the preeminence in the house, it's just our nature, right? We're, we're kings and priests. 
So somebody has to have the preeminence. And then there's going to be problems with that. Or you didn't pay your rent that month. But you want to start talking about brothers, you know, well, you didn't replace the toilet paper, this and that. Negro, did you pay your rent? You better be quiet then. It'd be happy that you're still here. You're not out on, on your behind outside. You know? So it says, uh, it's a miserable to go from house to house. For without our stranger, thou bearest not open that mouth. Why? Because you're, it's like you're estranged because you haven't paid your bills. You're not participating in the right way. Maybe you're staying with somebody because you fell on hard times. And then you're going to be all particular. You know, brother wake up to make you breakfast. He'd be like, mm, uh, you know, these eggs, I don't really like the way these were made. <laughs> the hell is wrong with you, bro? You better eat that thing and shut up. Go ahead. Thou shalt entertain and feast and have no thanks. Yeah, so you drink all the milk. The brother likes his little hostess cupcakes or whatever it is that he has. You're not participating in nothing and you ate his cupcakes. Right? You feasting in all his stuff. Brother, come home. You ever, you ever come home? You craving something? You're like, yeah, man, I want some milk with that cookie, man. I can't wait. You go in there and there's like a drop of milk in the container. I can't wait to have that leftover lasagna. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the lasagna story, I know that. You went to work. You worked hard. You working hard. And, and you feeling kind of beat down, you mopping some floors, scrubbing, doing security, whatever, and you're thinking about that lasagna you're going to heat up when you get home. You're like, oh man, that thing going to be good. And then you got another brother there just cooking it for himself when he walk in. <laughs> and they look at you like, like, like you did something wrong. Hey, I'm telling you that because this is a real situation that happened with Israelite brothers. With two Israelite brothers, man. And they look right at you when you come in. Brother came in, he said... That's my lasagna. <laughs> the brother looked at him and said, looked at him, looked at the lasagna, looked at him and went, no, it isn't. <laughs> Walked into his room and ate it. Read that verse and I'm going to explain why we, why we said that. Go ahead. Read it verse again. 25. Thou shalt entertain and feast and have no thanks. Moreover, thou shalt hear bitter words. All right. The brother hadn't paid his rent. Who the lasagna was for? He was behind on some of his bills. So that's why the brother didn't say nothing. Because he could have made a fight out of it. He said, I guess that's my rent payment for the no, no. <laughs> that wasn't it, but you know what I'm saying? So what, you don't want to find yourself in that type of predicament, all right? So it's like you got to get, that's what I'm saying. So then you're wondering why you're there praying for an apartment, but when you had little, right? The scripture tells you how can you be faithful in much if you're not faithful in, in little, right? You're not doing right in the situation that you're in. And then you're wondering why again, oh, my prayers aren't being answered for me to get my own crib. <laughs> Verse 26. Come, thou stranger, and furnish the table, and feed me of that thou hast ready. Because you have presumptuous brothers that'll do that thing. They'll be like, hey, hey, okay, you know, come feed me, right? Go ahead. Give place, thou stranger, to an honorable man. So now he's saying, listen. I'm going to give place to an honorable man, a man who's to his commitments. I use the point of the roommate because that's one example, all right? Or any of you people who want to house somebody for a little while. I'm not saying don't do it, but consider. You know, people always overstay their welcome. Yeah. We went over these scriptures when you had to move in with me when you, when you first separated from your, from your ex-wife because of the truth. All right? He'll, I mean, I'm not going to put all his story. I'm sure one day he'll tell his story, but... He was with someone that wasn't about the truth, so he made the decision. He got to a point where he was going to leave, and he said, Yeah, hey, can I come stay with you? I said, Of course you can. But let's go to Sirach chapter 29. And I said, Listen, don't come with that, all right? Because this ain't the world, because that's what happens. I, I always say, oftentimes, we're more disrespectful to family and friends than we are to strangers, because there's like what we say in Spanish that there's like confianza. So you have like that confidence. Right, so you have so much confidence that you're like, oh well, it's my family, so they love me, so I can get away with this. That's right. the problem. That's the loving your neighbor as yourself. I'm telling you, we ain't got, we ain't got that. We ain't got that. You think you got it, you ain't got it. Right, and in that same situation, okay, the, the, everything was laid out up front. And number one, I don't like living with anybody either, but I was in that situation, and I did not ever plan on staying there any longer than I needed to. Right, right. And no, it wasn't. It was, it was, it was a, a few months. No, but I'm saying some folks get comfortable. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what this is going over. All right. Or sisters. You know, I, we always speak to the masculine and, you know, to the men, but or sisters. So, because you got sisters that are like that, too. I've seen that. I think uh, I've rented space to a sister. And, like, just all comfortable, using all the toilet paper. And then you go that That's the worst. We talk about food. What about the brother who uses all your toilet paper? Don't buy it. And you go and you sit down and it's like... <laughs> 
<laughs> you're looking around for the sponge or the <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being gross. But no, I've seen it happen. I'm saying it because it happens. You know, we're talking about we want Christ to return, that we want the kingdom. And you can't get little things. Yo, that's like such a, a, a small consideration to have, man. <laughs> Go ahead. My brother cometh to be lodged, and I have need of mine house. Yeah, so now you overstayed your welcome. I have the ability to keep somebody who's about their business, you know, maybe a brother that's visiting out of state or someone who really fell on hard times and you've overstayed your welcome. Hey, I need my space. Go ahead. These things are grievous to a man of understanding. A man of understanding is not comfortable in that situation. He doesn't allow himself to stay in there. Because I'll hear brothers who verbalize it and be like, yeah, I just feel so bad that I can't help out. But if you feel bad, you would do something about it. It's all the time that you feel bad, but you can't do nothing about it. The hell is this? Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I didn't... Uh, I, I, I just, I don't have it. I feel terrible about telling you that, but I don't, I don't, I don't have the rent this month. You know, next week or next week. No, you're not a man of understanding, the scripture's telling you. If you're a man of understanding, you do what you gotta do to make that thing happen. Alright, go ahead. The upbraiding of house Because that's what that is. You're upbraiding the house. You're disturbing the situation. So There's been times where I've had brothers who want to come and, and stay with me, and it's like, listen, man, I got a wife and a kid, and, you know, it's, it's, it gets real complicated. I'm not saying you don't help a brother out, but it's like, you know what, maybe you should go look for a single brother to stay with. Because a man's spirit is a, man, is a spirit of authority. And it's hard for a man to stifle that thing, and now you're going to have two competitive spirits. Right? And then that's when you have the drama where, like, you know, the friend was staying with you and he slept with your wife. Because the, the woman's spirit, deep down, they may not admit it, wants to be led. They want to be led by a strong man. And now you have this two alpha male type thing going on there. No matter how hard the, the brother's trying to be humble, there's spirits behind all that. You can't have that. It creates confusion in the house. Who's the head? Go ahead. The reproaching of the lender and reproaching of the lender that goes back to what we spoke about in the beginning that if you're not in the commandments all right uh, why, why are you always in debt you come into money and you're still in debt you can never get out you can never climb out of that situation or those circumstances all right get me so about 26 and 4 because again it goes back to the mindset the book of Sirach, chapter 26, verse 4. Whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good heart toward the Lord, he shall at all times rejoice with a counsel, with a cheerful countenance. So it don't matter in what situation you're in. That's why, you know, you're entitled to feel how you feel, but if you stay in that, brothers will be like, man, you know, I'm just, my, uh, my mind, you know, I'm so stressed. I'm, I'm feeling so down because, you know, it's tough, you know. Everything that I'm dealing with right now is hard. Okay, the scripture says, so what? You should have a cheerful countenance regardless. Oh, you know who you are and what's in store for you. So it, how, how many of you, when things are down, can, can, can honestly say you're going to take it cheerful? I know it's tough. I'm not saying you shouldn't feel the emotion that comes behind that. But don't let that stifle you. Don't let that stifle the work. Don't let that mess up your communication and you're not communicating often because what happens people get depressed you don't hear from them they start to separate themselves the voices in your head start talking right and then the next thing you know you come back with like different doctrines and defending why you're not congregating you know so you gotta you gotta be mindful of that whether you're rich or poor have a good heart toward the Lord all right, you you have if if you're a man or a woman of understanding, you'll have a cheerful countenance, no matter what type of things are going on in your life. All right, give me Sirach two. Let's start at verse four. Two and four. The book of Sirach chapter two and verse four. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. It's a commandment. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. That's a hard thing to get to in this walk. You get the flat tire, right? The check bounces or whatever. How you take those? Tell me, how, man, the captain, what are we talking about? How you take those things cheerfully? Take them cheerfully. Because it could be much worse. You could be persecuted for believing in Christ. They could be looking for you to hang you or cut your head off. Like, then you do a Peter and just be like, no, no, I don't. I don't. Mm -mm. Christ is white. 
Shame on you, man. <laughs> the scripture tell you it's better to fear the destroyer of soul rather than just the one of flesh. We ought to fear God rather than men. Go ahead. And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. That's what I'm talking about. Don't let that depression, the situation that you're in, it, it, I think that that tends to be the problem with our people most of the time is that we want to will something to happen. And that goes for everything. That goes for judgments. But maybe I don't agree with a judgment. And, and, and I'm going to be mad and let that affect my whole mood. But because you want to will something to happen. Give me Romans 9.14 real quick. I'm going to digress on that because that's a big problem. This is what I'm saying. The, the spirit of Christianity is hard. It needs to constantly be purged out. I've gone over it before. However long you've been in this truth repenting, compare that to how long you've lived in the lies of this world. How long you lived in, in, in the Christian churches with those doctrines. You think a year, a few months, two years, three years, four years is going to make you immune to all that stuff? No, you got to get it out your system. It's deeply ingrained. Okay, read that. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Hey, listen, no matter... You might, in your mind, not agree with a judgment, with something that comes down. And this is when I talk about faith, right? Because you're in agreement with us, right? You're in agreement with leaders and whatever. Or you're in agreement with everything. Until a judgment comes that you don't agree with. Then then we're off. Then the Most High is not dealing with us. So as long as we're singing the song that you want to hear. Yes, those are men of the Lord. And then when it's something that don't go right with your own sin. Your own lust of whatever it is. Uh, whatever. Uh, I don't know man. I think they might be going off. Go ahead. But he said to Moses. I... I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Yeah, so someone will say, oh, well, that seems like a similar situation. How come this brother or sister was judged different to that one? Listen, I, when I used to work uh, uh, as a retail manager, and I would correct somebody, right? Maybe something came to my attention, right? And I had to do a write-up. It's not your business what type of counseling was done or whatever. Just know that it was addressed. And you're going to come out and be like, oh, well, if it was me, it wouldn't have been handled. Right. Well, maybe your circumstances were different. At the end of the day, it boils down to maybe you lack some understanding in that. Not only that, Cap, but Scripture says you judge people by their fruits. Right. All right, so maybe he had fruits that justify That's where the mercy and the compassion comes in. It says you're not going to forget a man's works. And you measure and you, and, and you see and you go, all right. You know what? Understanding, considering myself, like it says in Galatians 6, consider yourself lest you fall into the same how would I have maybe handled that situation? And you got to assess and say, okay, this brother's only been here for this amount of time. He's here, he's this, he's that. There were these circumstances or whatever. All right, what does the law say? The law says this. All right, did he, okay, so he messed up. All right, did he repent and fulfill the law? Yes. Why you still want us to keep a brother down or a sister down? It don't make no sense. How about you deal with yourself? Because if you were put out for a similar thing, or you were judged for a similar thing, there's no favoritism in judgment. So maybe you didn't do something that you needed to do to come back from that yet. And if you're not sure, then ask. That's the question you should be asking. What do I need to do so that I may be restored? Not, oh, I need to point out all the reasons why this brother or sister shouldn't be allowed back. That's that crab in a barrel mentality. You gotta check yourself. Go ahead. Verse 16. So then it, it is not of him that will it. It's not your will. There ain't no way that you're gonna will it to happen. Go ahead. No of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. It's God that showeth mercy. It's not by your will. It don't matter what you think or feel. And that same thing goes for salvation. If it's the Lord's will that mommy's gonna be saved, then mommy will be saved. If it's not, oh well. Does it sound cold? Sure. Enjoy her in this world, because she ain't going to be in the next if she don't repent. Uh, my grandfather, who's like a father to us, when he, when, when he got brain dead on that stroke, I said, damn, man, he didn't get to repent. It happened right around the time I was first coming into this truth. I said, damn. It took me a little while to deal with it, and when he passed, I said, you know what? So the Lord, I said, maybe he'll come back. 
Maybe that's my son. No, that's the that's the mother's side. That was grandpa from mom's side. Comes back from the father. But still, you never know. No, because the regeneration. I know some people are like what? <laughs> With the regeneration, that's what it is. All right. So you got to consider. I'm telling you, a lot of you need to think about that. And rather than hold on to it and and let it bother you and mess up your mood, when a judgment or something comes out, I've said it before. Hold your peace. And maybe you need to go back to the scriptures if you don't understand it. And prove your cause. You want to come and say, oh, I don't think this brother or sister should come back. All right, what scripture is that? Because if you come and all you're talking about is your feelings and emotions, you're not going to like the response you're going to get. Then you're going to see a spirit on us that you've probably never seen before. Go back to where we were in Sirach. The book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 4. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Take it cheerfully. Yeah. Uh -huh. And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Be patient when you're changed to a lower state. Sometimes some brothers show godly sorrow or sisters and they're patient with their situation and we see uh, uh, fruits meet for repentance. And then that's why a judgment's made. Go ahead. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So going back to the whole thing with the chief things in life and getting your mind right. Listen, maybe it's just the most high toughening you up to see if you're really about his mission. If you can still commit to and focus on this truth, even though you're not sure if you're going to pay the rent next month, or whatever it might be. We can, we've gone over that. Christ said what? You don't think God knows that you have need of that before you ask it? But it's to seek ye the kingdom of heaven first. So maybe, maybe stop worrying about that and dive into the work. Dive into your repentance if that's the level at you at. Maybe not everybody's ready to be laborers in that way. So how about you dive into fixing yourself? Control what you can control and manage what you can manage. If you can't change that situation, then why are you going to sit there handicapped by it? Paralyzed in, in, in your walk because you ain't got enough money? It don't make no sense. That's such a minor thing. Uh, read verse 6. Verse 6. Believe in Him, and He will help thee. Order thy way of right and trust in Him. That goes back to like what we read when we first started this course, right? And it talks about these classes, and it talks about whatever you ask, if it's according to His will, He gives you. So it says believe in Him. And not believe like Caesar Bourget taught you to believe, where you say it with your mouth, I'm washed in the blood of Jesus, praise the Lord, and, and that's it. The scriptures tell you to believe means there's action behind it. You show your faith by your works. There's plenty of examples there. You show your faith by your works. The lie of Christianity tells you no. Love them. Love them. Let me hug the air, Jesus. It don't make no damn sense. And sisters, y'all know when a relationship is conditional. You love your man because he loves you back. There's something that you get from him. You don't just love him because you love him. Listen, unconditional love is what God has for us. And, that, and that's it. People have conditions to their relationships. It's the reality of it. And maybe when the kids are little, because when they get older, you like the hell with you if you got the devil on you. When they're little, you have like unconditional love towards them, right? Because they don't know better. And that's kind of how God sees with us, because we are little to Him anyway. That's why I say that's the example of unconditional love. And without going too far off, that's why I say that the, the different steps that we take, you know, to be married, to have children, all of that gets you closer to that Godhead mentality because now you can maybe have a little bit, just just a, a modicum of understanding of what the Father feels for us. So when you have a child, you understand that thing now, right? So if your kid goes off and he does something that you told him not to do, right? The, the anger, the sadness, all those emotions. God has emotions. He tells you he gets angry. He's a jealous God. And if we're molded after him, some, some people would think that the Most High is up there just like this. He has emotions. We made in his image. <laughs> so where did our emotions come from? So we go through all these different things. Again, when I say that Godhead, it's to get us to that mentality to be ready for rulership, to be ready for the kingdom. Okay. Ecclesiastes says, as a he, that most I said, is a time to love. Right, to right, 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 right. Why exactly. did he say that? He didn't feel that way. Exactly, exactly. Why did he say, uh, Jacob have I love and Esau have I hate? That's emotions. Right, right. Okay, so that was it with the chief things. Now we're going to move on to the next thing. And hopefully I can get through that point. If not, Lord's will, there'll be time. Shalom,
Disney. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.